Andrew Denford, welcome to Off The Track and thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, you're welcome. Good morning from the UK. Uh, heading in towards Christmas and uh, just recovering from the World Finals we just had in Dharan. So, uh, yeah, exciting times for us. Definitely. And yeah, it's, it's a big moment for the competition today. So can you run through what's been announced today? Yeah, sure. We're going through a, a rebranding uh, of F1 in schools. It's about our third rebranding. We started 25 years ago under the name Jaguar F1 Team in Schools, for those that can remember that far back. Um, so, yeah, this is uh, the rebranding of the program into STEM racing, uh, supported by Formula One. Okay, and I think what a lot of people will be thinking is why why is the competition rebranding? Well, this kind of reflects the evolution of the, of the Global Education Initiative that's been focusing on STEM and motorsport for all these years. Um, we are an independent, not-for-profit organisation, and, and we really want to re-emphasise that and, and our mission-driven goals that we are uh, using uh, daily, yearly, and, and obviously right across the globe. So this rebrand enables us to harness the full support of Formula One and the Formula One community that supports us. It highlights a positive global impact on students and, and, and improving alumni success stories that we've got all over the world, a part and parcel of what F1 in schools has been for the last uh, 20, 25 years, you know? Yeah, and STEM Racing is the new name. Why was that name chosen? Well, I mean, STEM is fundamentally what we are. Um, the racing is a fun part. We know it's way much more than that with project management, sponsorship marketing plans, teamwork, all the life skills that we work with. But obviously, you've got to come up with a name. Uh, and it, it seemed perfect for us, STEM Racing. It's obviously now a registered uh, trademark, which we've now got going through the system. And uh, yeah, for us, it encompasses the whole program. Is this rebrand going to come into effect immediately or is it a bit of a transition period? Uh, well, we've, we're going to start and we're launching it on the 1st of January, but the, there are countries that will run through uh, their competition through to the end of their season, which in certain, certain cases could be to the end of next June. Uh, a lot of countries are excited about the programme, continuing to uh, build on what we've now created with STEM racing and we'll start immediately uh, with STEM racing. So. For, for them and for us, it, it's a new launch into a new uh, a new form of the program. But still, you know, it gives our independence uh, an opportunity to to thrive and, and and to build on what we've achieved over the last years. And I think what a lot of competitors will be will be wondering is whether this rebrand is going to have an impact on the competition and the regulations. For example, you know, with cars, are they going to stay the same? Will the halo still be on there? For example. No, the, the Halo was introduced, as you know, last year, and it was a great success um, in Singapore. Fantastic. It reduces the amount of breakages on the track. Uh, that obviously continued again in Dharan, which again proved to be really for us, uh, again, a phenomenal success. It reduced the amount of time wasted on repairing cars. But all of these things that we develop within the rules and regulations are done within our team of international judges and, and uh the committee that works on every year on, on just tweaking things. I mean, it was quite a massive change last year uh, to introduce a halo. Um, and everybody, you know, took it on board. Uh, and obviously the safety checks made sure that they were reliable. Um, and, and yeah, we'll continue to, to push the boundaries of the rules and regulations. Uh, but as far as we're concerned, you know, that's under our control. Uh, they look now more like Formula One cars than they've ever looked. And we're taking it down in the UK this season into the uh, entry development class. And we will be introducing the Halo into the primary class, which is our, our paper car version. So, uh, yeah, um, that th those things continue. Um, there's not a lot more that we think we can really change at this stage. Um, and, and it's, as we've always said, you know, it's the uh, new name, same mission. And although Formula One isn't going to be you know, the core part of the identity anymore. Is the competition still supported by Formula One? Yeah, I mean, it, it's STEM racing supported by Formula One. That's uh, how we are uh, going to be portraying it on our website. And the support of Formula One will be just the same, if not more. Uh, we'll be going, taking students into the into the paddock over the, the different races where we have in-country coordinators. Uh, obviously, the World Finals, we want to align that with a, a Formula One race. Um, and we're looking at the, the Far East next September. Um, obviously, costs are an important thing for school students. Um, Formula One is now becoming a hugely expensive um, sport to follow. Uh, so we've got to pick the right location with costs that are affordable uh, and obviously align it with a Grand Prix so we can do what we did just recently in, in, in Qatar uh, and take the students uh, into, the, uh, into the Formula One pit lane 
do the grid photograph uh, and, and continue those close associations with the sport. And, and that, that for us and that for the students is really important. Excellent. That's the end of the questions. Is there anything else you'd want to mention or do you think we've covered everything? I think it's just important for, for the community to understand that, you know, we are still working ever closer with all the Formula One teams. They see us as a, a pipeline into their into their businesses. The Komatsu Williams Engineering Academy this year was a great success. They've taken 10 students. That's uh, probably over 50 now we've got through that process with Williams. Uh, we want that to continue. Formula One will look at our students who've done um, F1 in schools and put it on their CVs, applying for jobs as probably head and shoulders above the other applicants because we give them so many life skills that they maybe never had an opportunity to experience in school before. So we're really proud of this competition. Um, and, and I think this this now puts us in an opportunity to expand into more and more countries. That, you know, There's obviously other different partners that different countries can talk to to get the sponsorship that's needed to make these this program run. Uh, we're really excited. I mean, the brand is really powerful. Um, you've seen that beat, so that'll be revealed tomorrow. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like onwards and upwards. And, you know, the, the problem we've got now is we've got 64 countries. Um, how many teams can we accommodate at World Finals? How many can we fit in a, a particular ballroom, for example? And how many can we judge? I mean, it's been three days of judging. It might have to be four. They've got to find the judges. You've got to make sure it's all fair and done equally across the board. Uh, so, yeah, it's challenging, um, but, yeah, we're, we're very, very excited and uh, we're pleased to make this announcement today. Wonderful. All right. Well, Andrew, thanks for speaking with us today. 